So um, I'm going to talk about uh, what the term I've used, transformability, which is the capacity to transform. And uh, sometimes I use uh, uh, movable or, uh, or adaptable or responsive or all, a whole sort of family of words, but transformability is probably the one that seems most at the heart of uh, what I do. And I've actually you know, set up um, uh, my own uh, firm around this idea. Usually we term it in the commercial sense as transformable design, and it's the design of objects, and they could be uh, products, they could be um, structures or artworks, uh, they could be buildings that change, that change their size, that change their shape. And uh, the notion of this uh, change is something that is not just uh, changing a state from A to B, but really focusing on that process uh, of change itself, the evolution of form from one form to another. It's an intellectually uh, fascinating um, uh, area, but it's one that also uh, has led to some very interesting uh, practical uh, applications as well. Um, transformability, of course, is ubiquitous in nature. Um, uh, organisms change their bodies birth to death. We all do, uh, but it also operates over evolutionary time span. Uh, where species change their form and they do so to adapt and survive and I think that in fact is the touchstone of where I think a lot of uh, these conversations are going is that transformability uh, is a strategy for adaptation and a strategy towards uh, sustainability. So uh, in my work over the years um, we've worked over many different scales in many different sectors from miniature medical instruments uh, up to architectural scale and what has really never failed is that every time we look at a new scale or a new application is that the lens of transformable design uh, is a catalyst for innovative thinking. But where I'm going to start is actually uh, on what it feels like to see objects transform. And of course, um, many of you know uh, my toys and when we first came up with these toys, I thought, great, this is a great visual, it looks really fun, kids are going to open it up and look at it, but um, actually they don't really look at it, they play with it, they interact with it, their bodies uh, interact with it. Um, this was uh, our spokesman uh, in uh, Japan in 2000, and uh, kind of what he's doing with this object is kind of what actually <laughs> one likes to do with things, uh, things like this. Um, you go up in scale, this is an expanding dome, uh, about 18 uh, feet across, pull on it, it, uh, it opens up. And this is kind of an updated version, we uh, developed a, a line of uh, rapidly deployable tents for military and crisis relief for a large tent manufacturer in the States, about a 700 square foot tent that goes up uh, in about three minutes. Uh, not quite as elegant as the dome, but very practical, and uh, the whole idea here was to make a super fast deployable truss that could meet all of the requirements uh, for military and crisis use uh, and uh, could do so with sort of a very natural ergonomics and it's that relationship to the body that I think is really you know telling about what uh, what transfer transformation means. Now uh, I wouldn't try this at home mm -hmm. but uh, if you jump off a ladder you can open up an 18 foot <laughs> sphere and there's a kind of a wonderful sort of legibility of the weight of the body versus you know, the transformable piece. Now when kids see this uh, move, you know, they're reacting, again, not just visually, but with their bodies. There's a visceral reaction, there's a physical reaction. It's a really, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a special experience. And as we've had the opportunity to even go up in scale, I'm gonna talk about this project a bit more, but the uh, screen that we did for the ongoing U2 tour uh, just really became kind of part of this ho holistic theatrical experience where physical transformation becomes part of light and music and sound. Uh, it is in live entertainment that we've had the uh, opportunity to build the largest uh, structures that we've done to date. In um, 2002, my company built uh, or designed and engineered, collaborating with, uh, with Bureau Happold on the structural engineering, a 72-foot curtain for the Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. So uh, this was at Metals Plaza where they gave the medals out. Uh, every evening. Um, it's being installed here in the uh, frigid temperatures and high winds of Salt Lake to be kind of deployed every night when the metals go out for, a, you know, kind of an audience of uh, the numbered in the hundreds of millions. 
So there was a lot of, um, you know, basically we had gotten to the point in 2002 of building these really large structures, uh, building sized and in many ways building functions. This was kind of just a, in a certain sense a real large windbreak. It's made up of, of aluminum extrusions backed by uh, polycarbonate. But again, the opportunity comes in the live entertainment sector because based on kind of the performance requirements and the associated cost, that's where really it, these things could justify uh, their value. And this shows the curtain as it opens with uh, light and uh, music uh, revealing the flame of the Olympics. Um, it was um, you know, a spectacular project and was really uh, kind of pointed the way to a lot, of, a lot of what we've been looking at in terms of theatrical integration. And this series of uh, projects for live entertainment has reached a kind of a peak with the ongoing U2 tour, uh, their 360 tour, which uh, started uh, a little over a year ago and is, uh, is continuing around the world. Um, so we were brought in to produce a video screen and a new kind of video screen. And I'm going to start with really the sort of the key creative members of the team because this was really a collaboration like uh, none that I've experienced before. On the left is Frederick Opsmer, who's kind of the father of video in, uh, in large arena concerts. Mark Fisher, who's been, uh, Peter Cook spoke about before, who's a real, you know, an absolute legend and was the stage architect, uh, myself, and Willie Williams, who's the uh, creative director for the band. And there's some sketches showing below uh, where they had this idea for this giant superstructure and what would a trans physically transformable video screen look like. So kind of a sketch of an inverted pyramid. Um, the, uh, here's a couple of renderings of what it turned into based on a lot of input from Mark and sort of the constraints of uh, our own mechanical system. We ended up with a kind of a conical ellipse. And um, it is a, about 4,000 square feet of high resolution video shown on the left, extending down three times to about three times the size. And you can see here that the height is about 22 meters and you kind of get a sense of uh, the scale relative to the body. Um, the process of making it was uh, intense, so it happened over a year. You can see the electronics integration, the uh, LED pixels, which are adhered to. So this is, remember, this is not a projection screen. This is actually uh, like TV screens, movable TV screens. And here's a little movie just showing some of the processes, the industrial components being assembled together. Uh, there were basically 96 units built, uh, kind of they were the building blocks, each one weighing about 700 pounds, and those had to be assembled in some uh, six hours to make the entire screen, uh, that single fact of the speed of assembly is one of the most mind-blowing things, uh, how it would go together in this uh, just incredibly uh, fast way. And here's kind of a first deployment. This is testing uh, in Antwerp, uh, very sophisticated software for mapping uh, video on the screen. And here you see it in operation. Um, so, you know, the way that First off, with the band, you know, the leadership of the band itself, the kind of uh, just incredible engineering uh, that went into it, um, the uh, opportunity to kind of put this in front of uh, millions, going on tens of millions of people, it was a chance to really work in kind of uh, giant movable structures, uh, basically resolving the connection between virtual media and physical media. Um, it really was, um, you know, kind of a, sort of a chance of a lifetime to really push. Uh, these ideas uh, to, to a certain kind of limit, and yet it never really is a limit, is it, because you do this. And I'd say that every creative and engineering person on the team could think of how to do it better the next time, and uh, hopefully we will. And this is what it looked like um, uh, during the concert, or sometimes like this, and this was kind of Willie Williams' sort of palette. He would just paint these incredible tableaus uh, on it, and then the kind of uh, scene, the best scene that the band had, and Bono would call this sort of, uh, he'd call it my spaceship when he would, uh, whenever he uh, kind of uh, closed out the show. 